Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. One of the biggest problems you have with Holsteins is they don't have very much mothering instinct. They have been bred purely for milk production and most of those cows, their mothering instinct is very, very poor. They're norm Half the time, they're not interested in the calves after they've given birth. They're simply not interested. Um, because the animals have been bred purely for producing milk, and, and that's what they have. Their mothering instinct has partially been bred out of them. Um, it's the same kind of scenario where you've got beef animals who have been bred for big and bulky. They've been bred to be so big and so bulky that the calves are really, really big as well. And some breeds are so big that more than half of the animals that are born are unable to be born on their own. They've got to have a vet uh, give the cow a cesarean section in order for the calf to be born. And this is sort of the, what we've, we've reached with breeding of these different animals. And some people will say that's not very nice. Some people will say, well, that's just, you know, kind of how they've been bred over the last 5,000 years. Um, I'm not getting into that in argument. I'm just kind of telling you what the situation is. So we've got, why, do I need to unfold this one? Ah, there we go, right, we have got some um, pigs in here, and there we've got Limousin, Ayrshire, Sailor, and Holstein. Brahmin, and then we've got a selection of different coloured Brahmins here as well, they're all males. Uh, so... I'm thinking that what we will do is the sailor there is a cheaper option for starting farmers known for their high marbling carcass and can return decent investment at market. Limousin, the carcass breed. Limousin is expensive but feed efficient animal, meaning it will grow very quickly and have a great price at market. These here, this breed requires a lot of feed, is expensive to buy up front but produces the most milk. Now if you go into this one and... Wait, no, it's not in here, is it? It's in here, and we want to go there, and then we want to run all the way down here to seasons. Animal production. Cows need to have calves before producing milk. And the rooster is the hen might brood on her eggs instead, creating offspring. Um, does it give us any more on that? Uh... Female animals can reproduce or produce while well, male animals are mainly for fattening and selling. All it says is that cows need to have calves. So what I'm going to do to start with is we'll soon be able to find out on this. We're going to go, just to start off with, we're going to go, no, we don't want those. We want, uh, wait a minute, I want, uh, yeah, the Holsteins. We're going to buy some Holsteins. So we're going to go in here, this one, two... And I'm going to move over 24 Holsteins. I don't know how many I got. Right, they're 2,000 each, so we want to do that until we get 48,000 there. Right, so we've got 24, which is one trailer load. I'm going to confirm that lot there. We've now got 20. Yeah, and, and look in the trailer. Look, you can see in the trailer in here, there, we've got Holsteins up here and we've got more in here. You wouldn't have the animals standing that far apart in these trailers, right? There's too much room for those animals to move. And that's actually a really bad thing. I know that quite a lot of people say, well, the, the poor animals, they need to be able to move around. No, actually, you don't want them to move around. What a stockman would do, what the, the person who's driving the trailer would do is he would push these gates up. He would absolutely push these gates up and he would push these cows together so that they cannot move around very much. Reason being, if he's got to put his brakes on and the cows are all spread out like this, they're going to fall over, they're going to break legs, they're going to get really seriously hurt. You do have to squash them up. It might not look very pleasant, but it is the safest, kindest way that you can possibly move your animals uh, from one point to another. Um, so they do need to be squashed up. So the animals that we got in here, this is highly unrealistic. We would... I'm, I'm thinking like the, the number that we've got here depicted, we would put double that number in here. 
um, squish them up a bit, and then they would be quite comfortable. They can still sort of move around a bit. Cows don't normally lie down anyway. It's not a normal, natural thing for cows to do to lie down. Um, a lot of cows will stay standing for um, days, even weeks. I mean, they do sometimes lie down. They do sometimes, but cows, like horses, will very often sleep standing up. Um, they just kind of rest standing up. They don't all. They don't always Right? It's, it's not... Um, cows are much more likely to lie down than horses are. But that being said, they do very frequently sleep standing up. You'll see cows, they'll go and they'll just spend the entire night standing. Some cows tend to do it more than others. You'll find some cows will frequently lie down. Um, and others will stay standing for ages. Them, they're quite comfortable to rest whilst standing. Um, it does tend to vary a bit from cow to cow. And each one does tend to be a little bit different. Like people, cows do have personalities. And they do tend to do things differently. So you've got... Um, we've, we've got all of these cows. that They're all wedged in here. We're going to take these back. And we're going to put some water and food in for them. Now, at the moment, the only food that we're going to be able to do is... We, well, actually, what I was thinking is we could run around and we could grab them a little bit of fresh grass. And if we put that in for them, we can at least see then what they're going to be doing. So we, we want to get water in for them first. That's, that's our um, most important thing to get in. And then once we've got the water in, then we can start dealing with some of the next bits. Now, I'm going to go on this road right here. Take that one. And if I can get in around this corner... Hmm. Just wondering if I can get around this corner without knocking that sign... See, I can do it without knocking the sign over, but then I'm going to wrap around the lamppost, so it's kind of a exercise in futility here. It would appear that getting around that corner is probably not something that's going to happen. We, we need to go the other way. We need to go down this way. This, this is obviously... Um, that, that road there is obviously the, the road for smaller vehicles. This is the road that we need to take coming up through here. So let's go in around that side there. And once I get back to the yard, we will just go and double check on our tractor working up in the field planting the barley. But he's, I, I don't think there's anything that we really need to check up on him with. And get these back into the yard so that we can um, just get them unloaded. I'm not going to put very much food in for them. I'm not going to put very much food in for them at all. What I'm actually going to do is... I'm going to come in around there, and I'm going to knock that road sign over, aren't I? And then, because I was watching the sign and not the tractor, I turned over too sharp. My bad. My bad. Um, we get these in here, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll get them all loaded up, and we'll see if we actually need to go and get any um, male animals as well. It might be that we don't need to. It might be that just the way they've done it is, yes, you've got female animals, and you've got to wait for the... Um, calves to be born, but they're, uh, we, we don't actually need to have that one there. Right, I'll tell you what I do need to do, and what I haven't done, is this bit right here. I was, oh no, wait, local plumber will arrive at six. Okay, so he's going to be there. We're going to run back this way. Oh, okay, no I'm not. I'm going to go over to here, and I'm going to do it like that. Right. No. No, 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 no. Go forward a bit, maybe? That's the gateway for it. I'm pressing R, rough R, all the way down through, and that's not actually giving me the unload option. Ah, there we go. Right, we've now got the unload option, so we want to move everything across like that. And then it starts to speed up a bit. There we go. All 24 Holstein Frisian cows are now in there. Confirm. And there we go. Our new herd of cows. Perfect. In every way. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and have a look in here. This is the one bit that I don't like is you've got this huge, great, big, long list. But because each cow is different, that's kind of why they've got it like that. And I'm going to look on here. So at the moment, cleanliness, water, next animal in, not fertile. Yeah, we've got to get some male animals over here, haven't we? Okay. Uh, total mixed ration, hay, silage, and grass. Effectiveness, 75% grass. 
for hay and silage, grass is 60%, and then TMR is 100%. So we can go and get a little bit of grass straight away and start dealing with that. And then we want to put some water in, and we don't have any straw. Straw is different. Oh, hang on. There was one other thing I wanted to see. Straw is a little bit different. Uh, the, this pen requires 62,000 litres of food to feed its animals for the next year. Good gravy. Okay. Uh, straw is different now. It doesn't give you any boost to comfort. If you put straw in, you get manure coming out. If you don't put straw in, you get slurry coming out. Um, you don't get both of them. And they've said they've done this for realism. Now, any dairy farm or animal farm that I worked on, that's completely the opposite. You'd have certain parts of the sheds where you would get slurry being pushed out from. And that was like the open yard in the winter and... Just turn off the indicators there. The open yard in the winter and then also the um, any of the channels and that. They would just produce slurry. And then the, any houses, any big sheds or houses that they were bedded down in, they would produce a manure because they're the ones that you would have the slurry, uh, the, the, the straw being put into. So you'd end up, you would end up with both. Almost every farm I ever, well, I, not almost. As you know, there was one that we didn't um, get much slurry from, but that's just because of the way that we cleaned them out. We kind of mixed the slurry in with the manure and then um, it, it came out as manure, but well, that was like a conscious decision. Uh, we still had to process it in order to get it to mix up so that it could go into the heap of manure. And that it, it kind of worked a little bit differently to how you would normally expect it to work. Um, but anyway, that's besides the point. It seems to me to be slightly unrealistic by only having one or the other. But that's how they decided to run it with seasons this time round. So that's what we're going to be doing. We are... Uh, for the most part, I'm thinking we're going to be wanting manure. We're going to go with that. So we will put straw in when we've got straw. We're not necessarily going to always have straw, but when we do, we will put the stuff in. We need to come over here and put some water in. And then tomorrow we will have our plumber turn up and he will deal with the rest. We'll just get a little bit of this put in now. Uh, so that's water. They're not going to die because of a lack of water. The only other issue they might have is the lack of food. And we're going to go and get some of that now. And we're going to want a little bit of grass. So there we go. We've got that one. Hey. Our animals over here. Cleanliness, 56%. Water, 220. We need to put some more food and water in for our chickens. They need more. There. And wow. Okay, we need a lot. I'm going to go and get another tanker full of water. We... we Yes, actually, I think the water isn't going to last us very long. I'll get one more tanker full, and we'll put that in for them. The chickens over here, that's 50% filthy? Really? It's a tiny little bit. There's nothing there. All right, yep, whatever, dude, whatever. This, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just go with that. We'll, we'll run with it, just as it is. It's fine. And this one here, I'm going to bring over and then back into the pond down here. Like this. And I can start filling it up. Back you down into there. How far in have I got to go? Oh, not very far. Do not drive too deeply in the water, but you never... <laughs> Don't drive too deep, but you're never getting out. You're never getting out of here again. You're stuck. Okay, let's not have that one slide down in. Oh, no. <laughs> we nearly got into some serious trouble right then. We very nearly got into some very, very serious trouble just then. That is not the sort of thing that we want happening to our farm. We could really do without that kind of malarkey. Without those kinds of shenanigans. Thank you very much. We run a tight ship round here, and a tractor in the pond is not part of running a tight ship. Not even a little bit. Uh, let's have a look at our fields a second. Where are we going to go and whip off a little bit of grass? I'm thinking that bit up there. We, do, we own that bit up there. I'm thinking if we go up there and we 
sort of do a pass around the outside with Azirian or something like that. And we're going to want a feed wagon to be able to do that. That'll get enough grass to bring us back like a load. And we can chuck it in there. And we'll worry about actually making more food for them later on. We're not going to worry about that just yet. Although, well, yes, I, I want to do that fairly quick, don't I? Because if I don't... Right, I'll drop you off there. I'm going to need to go and get a forage wagon to be able to gather this stuff up. Uh, we'll lease the forage wagon, same as we've been leasing just about everything else at the moment. Um, if I don't get a, get some in now, then the cows is going to start getting hungry, and it could take a minute or two to do the mowing. So, yeah, we will head back this way. We will go and get this forage wagon. Then we can go and get another 24 cows and add them in. This time what we'll do is we'll add in, um, we'll put in a, a male or two and just, just see if that makes any difference. It should do. It should make a difference then. Um, seems a bit of an odd way to do it. You'd have thought that they'd have a, like a, a, a prize bull or something like that. That would that would be much better. We'll, we'll see. I mean, maybe I've got this completely. Maybe I'm um, figuring this out all wrong. And then I need to go loading wagons right there. So we can do a small load there, 23,000. That one there is 34. That big beastie over there is 35,000. The fence is 42. And so it gets bigger and bigger, 56,000 liters there. So 56,500. I've got a crone mod there for 43. I've got a little old one right there. That's 25,000 liters that that one holds. And that's a, more of a, a classic one, that is. And then this one here, there's actually a few of those being run in my area these days. Good gravy. That one's 52,000 litres. That seems a bit excessive. Not sure why that one's got quite that much on it. Doesn't seem like it holds... No, not with that little small tandem trailer on it. Warning signs, standard, capacity 31,000. Oh, I guess it does that so that it can stuff it right up to the very brim, maybe? I guess that would make sense. I don't want to use that one. I want to use this one over here. And... No, we will lease it. I'm, I'm going to go with that. We'll go with those classic colours right there. And we're going to lease this one. It's not one that I'm going to keep for very long. Because when we do actually come to doing our silage harvest uh, with... Um, on silage on grass we're going to be using bigger trailers than this we're going to be using some monster trailers and uh, well a monster trailer at least and i'll probably end up buying that one now what i want to do because it's that field up there that i want to get now this is our field here actually i'm not going to cut across the field no cutting across fields we mustn't do that we must follow the roads properly what they're there for, we may as well use them. The council has very kindly gone and installed these roads here for us. So we may as well take, you know, make make use of their generosity and use these roads to their fullest. Come whizzing on down here. And there we go. Round this way. And in round here as well. That one's all done there. Switch off all of my beacons. I'm going to just park this one up right here, right there in the gateway, like that, and then I'm going to leap off, and I'm going to come over to here, and we're going to try this one out. So we are going to go and do a little bit of mowing. I'm not quite ready to do lots of mowing yet, but I have been wanting to try this bad boy out here, and I've no doubt that Ducky is probably fairly keen for me to try this one out. He's got his logo plastered all over the front of it, so it does... I'm, I'm assuming that he, he wanted it um, wanted it to be used at some point. It's got a beautiful sound to it, doesn't it? Ooh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this bad boy. That's quite a big field here. We're not going to need all that much for cows at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to need some. Actually, I don't need... I want to go Control S there, and I'll turn those off. We're not going to use the GPS at the moment. What I am going to do is I'm going to unfold that one, and then I'm going to unfold that one there. I'm going to go back to this front one. I'm going to start that one up. I'm going to go to the back one there, and I'm going to start that one up. And then I'm going to go to here. We've got 
Left control. I can change driving direction on this one, but the mowers are the wrong way round for doing that. So, no, we don't want to do that. Um, toggle work mode. Left control Y. Like that. There. So, now we are rowing up. That's what I want to do. What is this? Select work mode, swath dropping. Oh. Oh, look. The ah, the mower swings out to the side or swings in. So you've got like a, a wider swath or a narrower swath on it. And then the same with that one as well. That is actually very, very cool. Okay. I'm quite impressed. I am actually very impressed with that. So we're going to go control V so that everything lowers down onto the ground one after the other like that. And we'll keep the mowers in tight together. There we go. And we're now dropping a swath in round. The, the big question for this one, this little setup, is going to be what is it going to be like going around sharper corners? Because obviously going in a straight line, it's going to work. It's going to work really well. But what's it going to be like going around the sharper corners? And we're going to test that in a minute. Just so that we can find out for sure what it's like. I do have to remember that we've got four-wheel steering on this one. So it is a little bit sensitive with steering. Um, far more so than we're normally used to. I don't know if that's going to impact the way the swath comes out. I'm now going to turn a little bit. I'm going to go up here and what I'm going to do... We're going to do once around the outside. I'm going to go up to this corner here and then I'm going to try and turn fairly sharp on that corner. And we're going to... There, we'll run a sort of fairly sharp... and. To be honest, it's leaving that swath in a fairly neat and tidy swathy heap. Right, it doesn't, it didn't seem to spread it very wide. Now, I don't know if that is the four wheel steering or if that is the mod itself, which is just kind of tidying things up for us as we go along. Maybe not 100% realistic doing it like that, but I suppose it's not far off. Um, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. So we'll go up here and we're going to do this test again. This time I'm going to slow the tractor down. We're going to go to here like this. And then we're, we're going to keep going actually. We keep going. And then I'm going to do a sharp turn now. Around that corner. Right. Okay. It doesn't gather it up. It doesn't make it tidy. And you're still left with that little bit of grass in the middle of the swath out on the corners. The fact that we got the four-wheel steering on this tractor, I think, is actually making the whole turning procedure a little bit better. Um, it very quickly does the turn and then sort of straightens up again. Um, and plus, it's swinging the back mowers out a little bit compared to what um, a normal tractor would do. So I think the I think the tractor is actually bringing in some benefit to this so i'm gonna do it again down here we're going to swing round the corner like that and then we sort of straighten up as we go and yes it did leave some behind but it didn't seem to leave a huge amount behind so i'll just lift that one up like that and then the back will come up as well and then all i'm going to do now is i'm simply going to start folding them up like that and they'll switch them both off as we do so we go back round there. I do like the maneuverability of this tractor. This tractor is very awesome with this. You know, being able to manoeuvre like that, it definitely makes it a little bit easier. Um, and we got old Duck Zorley Gaming right there. Now, if you have a look right there beside us, we've got a swath all the way down through. this tiny, tiny little bit of grass that's left right there on the side. But that's not very much, is it? Like, there is very, very little grass that is left uncut this this will do to start with this this is all we're going to need to do to start with we'll go and pick this up with the forage wagon and the other tractor get it back down here we're tipping in for the cows and then we'll go and get some more cows i ideally i'd like to have 100 cows i think that would be a good starting off point 100 cows but we also need to sort of find out if we need to get male cows in with them 
Um, well, technically those would be bulls, not male cows, but um, yeah, you, you get the idea. Um, so we, we want some bulls in here as well, but I'm not quite sure how the game decides which ones we should have. So if I just have Holsteins in there, is that going to do it or not? And I know that I've already been over this. We have a look in here again and go to there and then we will go down. I, I, I don't know why it does that. Look, see, I bring that one down there. And as soon as I mouse back over that way, it does... Right, now it didn't. It's very strange the way it's doing this. Okay, cleanliness there. Next animal in, not fertile. So, well, we're going to we're gonna need some food in for them. Cleanliness is fine. And they've got the water. So, we definitely, we definitely need to go and get the food. But the whole issue with the, the other cows, I think we'll get... Hmm. I don't know how many I need to get. I mean, for 100 cows, for a normal farm, you would just have one bull. That's all. You wouldn't need more than one bull. I mean, some might run two, but that would... Uh, well, in my experience, that would be unusual. Um, but, yeah, um, you know, every, everybody does run things differently. It's, um, it's the one thing that you learn with Farming Simulator, and it... Well, not necessarily the game itself, but by talking to everybody that watches this series... If there's absolutely one golden rule, it's that no matter what I've seen and what I've done, there is always going to be people that do it differently. And it doesn't matter where we, where I look in the world, there's always going to be people that do it differently, even in that same region of the world. So I can't sort of say, this is how it's done in the UK. This is how it's done on some farms in the UK. But I can't just make blanket statements. And there's one thing, you know, farmers adapt farmers have you yeah uh, you know, i know that i got quite a few of you who actually watch you're an adaptable bunch you are you farmers and um i sort of can't really class myself as a farmer anymore it's been more than a decade since i was actually involved full-time in farming so it's a, i used to be a farmer but uh, i can't really class myself as a farmer anymore um and but i do know farming i i've been involved in farming and um i've got farming blood in my family on both sides of my family it's a generation i come from many generations of farms and so it's it's kind of just sort of bred into me almost um but one thing that farmers do is they adapt and they overcome that's what farmers do adapt and overcome that's that's the one thing it doesn't matter where you go in the world oh helper a has stopped working i did tell you that we need to go and check on him and then i can promptly forgot all about it didn't i um Farmers adapt. They do. It doesn't matter what particular problem is thrown at them. They find a way to get round it and get through it. That's what farmers do. They're very, very good at adapting and getting through these different problems that do tend to arise. Um, I mean, life for everybody throws up all sorts of problems. And you find ways to get through it. Everybody finds ways to get through these problems. Farmers are exactly the same. It's just that farmers, to get through their problems, tend to, you know, th their problems require practical solutions. Um, so you will find all manner of different ways. You know, every farmer has approached the situation and has thought, right, well, what's the best way for me to do that? And so he does Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.